Here we go. It's blocker, y'all. I'm going to tell Tony, we're going to make this one take because I'm supposed to be going to meet Block today. Uh, I just got 10,000 subscribers. Woo! Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all for everything y'all do for me. Y'all been asking about this breakdown or whatever. I've been receiving a lot of hoo-ha, you know, whatnot. People who don't like what I have for me. It's not like I sell weapons. YouTube, I do not sell anything for anybody. I don't sell, you know, firearms or parts or anything. I only sell ideas. So, anyways... Here we go. Full breakdown, y'all. One take, because y'all swear I'd be doing multiple takes. We got Blocker broke down. What we got here is a semi-budget mid-bill. Reason I say that is we do have um, um, additional parts that uh, mimic each other, You know, whether you decide to choose which magazine you want or if you decide to choose which bracing system you want. We got Strike Industries here. We got Odin Works there, right? It's the difference between about... I don't know, $89, $100 and about uh, $250 going to $300. All right. So let's just do this real quick, man. Um, I'm going to show y'all what it looks like now and I'm going to put everything together. Can't show y'all how we put things together. But what I'm going to do is basically just, uh, you know, you know, YouTube magic, right? All right, so we are using 300 blackout today. This is a 300 blackout build. This barrel, let's start here because I feel like this is the first place you should, one of the first places you should start when you're doing the AR-15 build is you should figure out, what are you shooting, man? Um, this is dirty. I ran through it like crazy. This is CAC Industries, as you can see here. Shout out to CAC Industries, by the way. Um, they have a nice lady there named Melina, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to make sure that that's correct if that's not correct. But um, she definitely helped me out with some crazy um, some crazy support. So this is basically a 4.75 inch, um, 1 in 8 twist barrel. This was my first project barrel that I purchased um, on my endeavors of trying to make a Super 300 Blackout bill one more practical and one more you know, combat, shit hit the fan type savvy, which is coming up soon. Y'all don't miss out on it. But regardless of which, this is a 4.75 inch barrel made by CAC Industries. Um, yeah, anything they make, even though I only purchase their barrels and their BCGs, I'm just going to automatically assume are of quality and work to pretty much perfection. They run, man. They're, they're pretty good. I, I'm going to actually give you a sneak peek of another one. Um, as you can see, I have multiple barrels, um, but I do have one in particular that I want to show you all. Here we go. See what I'm saying? So this is the stainless steel version. So this is a um, this is CAC Industries. As you can see, they got their little stamp right there, but it, yeah, CAC Industries. But this is a 300 blackout barrel. It's a 6.25 um, inch, right? And I actually got another one. Sneak peek. This is y'all. I got something for y'all. Uh, so basically, um, just to kind of show you that, you know, they do have different qualities. This is stainless steel versus this one, which is, I don't know, whatever, iron steel. Like, whatever, it works, right? But um, if you want a little bit more accuracy, I do have a 4.75 inch version of this that is stainless steel um, that was originally in Blocka um, after she got upgraded um, the first time. And it's a one in five inch twist barrel so like i said this is one five inch and this is um one and eight inch so when you're thinking about twist rates um especially with 300 blackout uh, one thing that i want to point out is that the one in five means that 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 round spins a complete turn one time and a five inches right so you need five inches so by this barrel only being 4.75 inches right just hold on let me let me get a tape measure y'all hold on give me like five seconds because i want to i want to explain something very important to you all um got the tape measure here right 4.75 inches do you understand how long the barrel actually is though compared to the actual length of it 4.75 Five inches. You see the 4.75 stops there. Why does it stop there? Well, 
we, we got to be able to place all this stuff in here. So this is actually um, put on the barrel after they make the barrel. Uh, this is the, I can't remember the name of it. Somebody in the comments, uh, let, the, let the lovely, um, you know, the people that are also watching with you, um, let them know what this is, this particular part right here, because it can matter depending on the bill. But in this build in particular, 300 Blackout is supreme when it comes to 762 in build um, integrity, like um, the actual integrity of the build, like how strong it is. And that more so goes to the BCG and stuff when it has to do with um, shooting 762, this version versus the um, 39 coming out of AKs and whatnot. So another thing I want to show y'all is how large the round is to the actual um, so this is a 168 um, grain 300 blackout you know um, boat tail woody, 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 right so when it goes in here you got to kind of see it like man it goes pretty far right so that that round is actually sitting probably about right here and it's only getting this much to be able to actually, you know, twist and, you know, do what it needs to do. Um, so that's just something else to keep in mind. Uh, a lot of people don't think about that when um, when they're when they're doing barrel links and stuff. So just keep that in mind. I had to I had to use that right quick. All right. So yeah. So it's just a you know let y'all know what's going on. So. 4.75 inch barrel, it does make for a very short setup. When I start with the barrel from there, you understand why everything else kind of just comes into play. In all honesty, um, without the barrel, I can determine if I'm going to make a 5.56, 223, uh, a 22. I can even do a nine millimeter bill. I believe you can do like a 45 bill now, I'm not quite sure. Um, but you see what I'm saying, right? The AR-15 platform is almost limitless. And the fact that you can just pretty much um, build almost anything from it, pistol caliper, rifle caliper, um, you know, pistol cartridge, rifle, rifle cartridge, whatever. So the barrel to me is the most important part. I'm sorry I dragged this out, but I just want to let y'all know why, why, why the barrel is so important. It determines how big your build is going to be, if it's going to be a compact build, if it's going to be, you know, like a battle build for long range targeting. Um, and that really just determines what kind of handguard you're going to get. That may determine what kind of upper lower you're going to get. It may determine what kind of grip you're going to get, what kind of bracing system. You may not even get this. You may get like some cowboy shit with a lever on it or something. You know what I mean? So it determines a lot of things. It determines what kind of sights you may want to run on it. It determines what kind of muzzle devices you want to run on it. You know, what type of ammunition you're going to use. Everything, right? Start with the barrel, man. Figure out what you're going to shoot. Get your barrel, figure out what you're going to shoot, figure out how you're going to shoot it, and then you'll have your build together. That's the best way that I can try to describe it for you all to understand. Okay, from there, man, let's just get through it. Um, we got a cheap lower. Um, you can really get crazy with these lowers, um, especially when they cut out. So this is Strike Industries. It's a little, you know, whatever they call this, trigger guard. Um, not too expensive, probably about um, 80 bucks or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, I guess that is kind of expensive. Um, from there, the grip, right? I like this grip, this Strike Industry grip right here. I do like it. It's very, very, hmm? Right? And we start thinking about um, things like the upper. So the upper, in this case, is a Bear Creek Arsenal. I did want some type of side charging upper. Um, this was the cheapest that I found on the market. Turns out it's probably one of the hardest hitting ones on the market. Big shout out to Bear Creek Arsenal. I'm just going to give y'all that for free. You get one for free, guys. You get one shout out for free. Um, y'all really held it down with this BCG. This BCG, this, um, you know, this charging handle latch thing, um, it screws in right here, by the way, and it's solid. Um, it actually helps deflect the rounds as you shoot, when you can imagine. You know, you shoot, um, the BCG goes back, the round is already coming out, right? And this, if it's not going out, you know, if it's coming out in this direction, this is going to make sure to knock it back that way. So don't, man, 
this is crazy. And then you can actually upgrade this, what I got coming on the way. I'm just going to let y'all know. I got a land tag boat coming on the way, a side charging land tag boat. Um, and that's going to go into here. And that's going to be um, pretty dope, too. Isn't Yeah, it's going to go into here. It's going to be pretty dope. So, yeah, shout out to them for making some really sturdy, um, project worthy, hard duty use stuff. Man, I can. I. Yeah, so what I was saying was like, I, I've really ran this really hard, man. Like, for my 300 blackout bills, if I want to test the trigger or the barrel or anything, I'm probably going to run it in this first and I'm going to run the crap out of it. And then I will put, you know, whatever else I want to put on there and then start. Yeah, that's that's just how I am. All right, so we got that, man. Yeah, we gave them their shout out. We gave them their, um, you know, their apples and oranges, whatever. All right, Odin works, man. So finding you a handguard, right? So this handguard is actually shorter. I mean, it's actually longer than this barrel. And um, this is a 5.5 inch handguard by Odin Works. And um, it's just really dope. It's really light, um, you know, just some billet stuff. Um, and this basically tucks in about right here. So after I add in the muzzle device, you get what I mean? And then, you know, whatever else, then I can go. So this is just something that some people do sometimes when they want to, you got to think about like, do you want your handguard to be longer? It can be a little bit longer depending on what type of muzzle devices you're running. If you're running a suppressor, that's going to be like six, seven inches maybe. Um, and, you know, you could just think about it. Okay, yeah, I can tuck my can if I want to. Before you do that, though, I will tell you that tucking your can can, um, you know, cause your handguard to get hot if you're shooting excessively. Um, that that can, those suppressors get hot, man. I don't, I don't care what nobody says, especially if you got a titanium one, those suppressor gets hot, man. And um, they're going to stay hot. Um, and they're going to make your handguard hot. And if you're holding that handguard, guess what? Your hands are going to be hot, boss. Barbecue fingers. Yeah, so this is Odin Works. Um, it does. I do want y'all to keep in mind of these M-Lock slots. I also want you to keep in mind of these um, quick detach slots, these QD slots here. Um, you see that this one is a little bit shorter than this one. These are full length M-Lock slots, M-Lock slots, right? So keep in mind when you're purchasing and make sure you pay attention to these slots because that can mean a lot of things for you in the future when it comes to the type of attachments you can add and what you're going to have to, you know, do to be able to get it. Now, before you get too nervous, they have, you know, M-Lock, straight M-Lock devices. They also have the Picatinny attachment, detachment that can go in here like these right here. And when these go in here like that. Uh, basically what happens is it allows you to put, you know, picatinny rail attachment type stuff on there, right? Um, but they also have canny levered picatinny rails. So say I wanted this to be closer to the, to the handguard here and, you know, well, to the lower, um, I can actually get one that's a little bit picatinny. It, it attached here, but it goes out this way. You get what I'm saying? So just keep stuff like that in mind. Um, AR is extremely 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 um uh, versatile platform okay let's let's go to muzzle devices we probably should have went to muzzle devices um these are important and not important at the same time uh, a lot of people just run uh, a2 flash or something like that flash hider and that pretty much does it but these hybrid these hybrid style muzzle devices are the future you can't deny it um you know we got the flash cutters you do got the double baffles for the muzzle brake, and then you got ported holes for compensation and muzzle braking as well. That's pretty dope. I like hybrid solutions. Hybrid solutions tend to work best for me, and um, especially when you're running short style devices like this one, um, you want to be wary of the muzzle blast and the muzzle velocity. Um, not the muzzle velocity, but just the muzzle blast, right? And the concussion and everything coming out of there. This is why I got a blast shield. So this is Strike Industries, um, King Comp, and this is Strike Industries Blast Shield. Like I said, y'all are only getting one shout out. Come on, man. I, I'm, I use y'all stuff all the time. Hit me up. Hit me up. Bear Creek, hit me up, man. Strike Industries, hit me up. Odin Works, hit me up, man. Uh, I'm here. I'm here. So, and I'm for it. 
So um, one thing I want to let people know, um, don't lose the sense of being creatively tactical. Okay, we in there. Right. By the way, I did test this and I'm not sure. Strike Industries got to let us know if you can or, or if you're supposed to shoot like this. I have shot it like this and it has helped with um, just pushing out that concussion and that blast and that shock wave a little bit further away from me before it actually blooms out and I feel it, which helps. Right. Um, and basically what I want to tell you all is that running a setup this short. If you're about 10 feet away from me, I don't even have to um, hit you with a round to affect you or affect you with the shot affect you affect you with my shots does that make sense the concussion blast alone is gonna is gonna make you reconsider guy it's gonna make you do more than reconsider it's gonna shut it's gonna rock your head man it's gonna you're gonna feel the heat you're gonna you're gonna feel the blast wave you're gonna feel it in your chest you're gonna feel like you got hit by something and you're gonna start checking your body trying to figure out if you got hit and, and that's when it's gonna happen so anyways, yeah, man, this really helps redirect the blast wave, y'all. You should definitely look into, um, uh, if you don't have suppressors or in the meantime, some shorty devices, you don't always want suppressors. Like I said, be creatively tactical. It's up to you how you choose to do what you want to do. I just hope that everyone is being creative in their own mind space, in their own individuality and whatnot. Um, so yeah, really good, really good dope stuff. Um, and it looks crazy, man. And it locks in like finesse, man. It looks crazy, yo. You can't beat it. So um, these do get expensive. I think this in this combo is probably going to run you about 200, 200 something. Um, you don't need these. Like I said, you get your little A2 flash hider for like 15 bucks. And you can throw it on that. And um, it'll do you just as good until you get you a suppressor or something or something else that you feel like you need. Just look into blast can um, devices. This is what I like. This is what I use. So... That's what I've used. I've ran it to death, and it definitely helps me, and it definitely um, also assists me in in the purposes that I'm trying to create with with this with this setup. All right, so we got down to stuff. All right, so um, with you know with magazines, I only stick to. I just got Lancer. This like first time I'm actually using them recently, but Magpul is pretty much um, no doubt like. Magpul is good. I need some glasses, Magpul. These are Magpul gloves, by the way. I need some glasses. Do y'all mind? Let me get some glasses, man. All right. Um, so be, keep it in mind that you you if you're using 300 Blackout, I would use 300 Blackout. These are 300 Blackout magazines, right? Reason being is because you see this. This is a 125 FMJ, right? And this is a 168 right so just a little bit bigger just a little bit bigger just a little bit longer this is the boat tail too by the way hollow point boat tail a little bit bigger a little bit longer um and this can cause when you're stacking it can cause you know feeding issues especially if you're using 556 five, um uh, preparatory magazines right prepare whatever anyways all right this is one of the first um, project triggers i ever got it's a timney trigger um it's a competition trigger, um, flat face bow. Um, it's about four point something pounds, four point five pounds maybe. Trigger pull, very clean, very sleek. Um, you can catch them on deals a lot of times, and they work, man. They function. Um, I've ran these pretty crazy as as much as I could to try to get whatever kind of rounds down range to make sure you know, I, you know, function check. This is the function check king right here. Timmy triggers, they do have some really dope triggers, by the way. I wouldn't mind testing out y'all triggers, man. Hook, hit, hit me up, Timmy. Um, they got some other dope triggers that's pretty dope. Uh, I'm going to try to hit them up and see if I can get them in play because I do like their stuff as well. Um, and this is a cassette trigger. It just lets me just drop that in there and sit that in. And also, reason I do triggers like this, I do have you know other style triggers that you normally have to put together and whatnot. But it does have little set screws here and here. You see the screws come out and I twist it down and it basically it helps lock it in there when I push them when I'm pushing pins in there and it locks the pin in there and this doesn't rock or move or anything. It's it doesn't move, man. You don't even need lock pins if you get this because it already has lock pins in it. It's pretty much what I'm trying to tell you. All right, so beyond that we have the Strike Industries um, brace. 
see if they have their name on this one. They don't have the name on this one, but this joint is nice. Um, it does come with this right here. It doesn't come with this back plate face with the multiple, the, the three face, the three face um, quick detach on it. I literally chose this because of that. I wanted versatility. Uh, this is what I went for. And it's pretty short, man, as you can see. It is pistol style. It does come with the H2 buffer and stuff like that for your necessities. Um, if you do run H2 buffers, that is a heavy buffer. Is that the best buffer I would run in a 300 blackout? Probably not. I would probably run the lightest buffer I can, and I would do so with something I'm going to talk about in the future. But first, let me show you this Odin Works. Y'all have seen it. Um, very sleek. It does go with the design quite well. Uh, it just looks good together, man. It just looks very good together when it goes together. And uh, they have very, very nice stuff. They, Yeah, they have nice stuff. I don't know what else to say about that. So Odinworks is pretty dope. Um, I bought a lot of their stuff. Um, that one does extend. I have shown it to you before. I'm going to show it to you again. So I didn't... Let me just take this out so it don't go crazy. All right. So y'all know this does extend. And that's just dope, man. You, you really can't beat that. That's just... This is like... This setup right here all together is probably about 200 and then this all together is about 260 or something like that 300 and you get what I'm saying like and it has a quick detach here and um, you get what I'm saying like you get to you get to you know yeah yeah so somewhere around the same price range to get something similar but you know just different variations of things. And just things to keep in mind that you, if you start building, you're going to have so much stuff left over that you're going to probably be able to build um, at least two, maybe three guns after, my bad, you're going to be able to build two, maybe three firearms after your first project. I guarantee you, you're going to have enough parts. All right, let's talk about gas block and gas tube. Gas tube, man, just get you a stainless steel gas tube. If you can get you like DLC or something like that, that's dope, man. And this basically just goes on to here like that. Um, reason I went with this, which is a Strike Industries gas tube, is that it is adjustable. So it does have these little adjustments here. And with running a short setup, and you know, my mind put a suppressor on it, so you know what I'm saying? I want this to be able to adjust the gas as B. So when I take the suppressor off, I'm like running it down to here. As you can see, it's ran a lot. And then when I put the suppressor on, I want to open that up a little bit so I can get a little bit more gas to come back to that chamber and cycle that bolt, that BCG. Um, so yeah, this is the Strike Industries. Uh, very easy to put on. Uh, you can, you take this off after you install it and then you can pretty much rotate it as such with a little bit more um, resistance. But yeah. You can pretty much do that. So if you have a handguard that you can take off or you have a way to be able to stick down inside of there, you'll be able to change your, you know, you'll be able to change it on the fly. So that's pretty dope. That's just something to keep in mind with adjustable gas blocks. I will tell you that adjustable gas blocks are known for um, basically getting carbon locked and then they get stuck in that, in that adjustment. That's why this one is a little bit more, Strike Industries is really innovative, man. That's why this one's a little bit more different and crazy is because you're not like a set screw to adjust that gas block is here. And you getting gas lock, you getting carbon lock here is, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> so, man, after you get everything together, man, you just decide what kind of flavor you want to put on top. Maybe you want to put a site on. This is a holographic site for CQB situations. Maybe you want to put a light on. This is just a nice little cheap little light on Amazon. Cheap, but you know, sturdy. Um, I did destroy the layer laser myself because I over over torqued it. I over torqued the adjustments and that messed up the set screws in there. But um, the light and everything is just pretty bright, pretty blinding. It is recharged, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, I'm not going to give them too much. To, but they did send me that. Um, I did receive that from them and stuff like that. So I just want you to check these people out and just let them know that's a vortex by the way that thing is a bad mama jamma and um, it got some other things that can go with it and accessories and whatnot that just makes it even 
better, if you ask me. But this is Blocker, man. I'm finna put her together right now. And uh, yeah, man, let y'all see what she looked like when she all together. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna go with, though. Um, I'm gonna go back with this one just because. All right, and we here, y'all, as you can see. We got Blocker uh, in one of her more original states. Uh, just let y'all check out that trigger right quick. So that's pretty good if you ask me. Um, very nice trigger by Timney Triggers. Uh, like I said, this entire bill together like this with everything on it, um, we're looking at like 300, uh, maybe like 100, 120, something like that. 60, the trigger, 80. We're already looking at um, about uh, 400, 500, 600, $600, $700 coming up to this, $200. The barrel, depending on which one you go with, $100 up to $300, $1,000. Um, most of the vice, whatnot, a couple hundred dollars. This grip, probably about 15 bucks. This is about 500 something dollars that site that holographic site and um you know accessories like that and such but to keep in mind um this is probably about a 1200 dollar bill um it will be pretty good um uh, when you start going into really great bills where something that seems budget is actually better than some pre-made gucci guns like you know some of the top line people you know people just like to buy their guns pre-made whatever if that's you that's fine but um, this, in, in, in a sense, is, like I said, um, pretty practical. It'll probably hold his, hold his horses with $2,000 gun bills, just being honest with you, um, even with the Bear Creek um, upper and whatnot. Um, just by changing out this bolt or whatever, you would save money. Lantac bolt, about $300, $400. You'll save money and get something that's just like, get you about two hundred another $100 add to that and get you the stainless steel 1.5 twist barrel. You see what I'm saying? You you got you got honey badger quality for about seven eight hundred dollars less. Just gonna be honest with you. Uh, love the bill. It works. It runs. If you don't like it, that's up to you. This is more so for the people who ask me for a breakdown, a bill list of what's going on in this bill. And I just wanted to make it for you all right quick before I get onto this project of this other bill that I got coming up shortly. Appreciate y'all. Stay tuned. Catch y'all on the flip side. All right, one.